Okay, so we uh, continue with um, uh, the topic of uh, digitalization and uh, the keynote ad uh, headline is Navigating Changes in Today's World and we uh, will hear a presentation about the digital transformation. And the speaker now is Vladimir Gudic from Montenegro. I made a mistake this morning with Nikolai, who's not from Montenegro, as I said, but from Serbia. And uh, Vladimir, I think, is uh, competing very much with Nikola about being the second hottest man after me. So, Vladimir, please. No, no one can take the title of the second hottest guy in the room from Nikola, so sorry. Um, Whenever you hear the words, once upon a time, you know that what happens is going to be a fairy tale. And whenever you hear the words, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, you know that what happens is going to be a... Star Wars movie. Thank you. And whenever you hear the words, we live in times of great change, you know that the person standing in front of you is a management consultant. <laughs> because a management consultant literally cannot open his mouth without saying the words, we live in times of great change. There's even a joke that when management consultant opens up his laptop, starts Microsoft Word, Word automatically starts writing, we live in times of great change. And then it's up to you to continue. But what kind of change are we actually talking about? Well, before I talk about business change, I'm going to tell you a short story about the personal change I have to go through, and I'm still going through, in order for my business to continue operating. Well, the thing you see here, the building with the red roof, we call it a little red riding hood, it's the School of Economics in Podgorica, University of Montenegro. The place where I used to teach for 12 years. And I started very young. I was pretty much the same age as my students, so it was very easy for me to connect with them. And it was easy for my messages to resonate with them. We basically watched the same movies, we listened to the same music, we went to the same football games, so my message resonated with them. However, four, five, six years passed by, and I was giving a class at 8 a.m. on Monday, First year, 500 students. Huge auditorium, 500 students. And I quoted a famous management thinker. However, at that point in time, I couldn't remember his name. So I was like, that guy, that, that famous guy, that famous thinker, and someone from the back shouted out the name of the guy. And I said, thank you. Yes, thank you. You can be my wingman anytime. And nothing happened. So if anyone knows what I'm talking about and what movie is this from, just shout out the name of the movie throughout my talk. So I said, look kids, this is a line from a very famous movie, one of the most famous movies ever. What movie is this from? No, it's not Star Wars. There will be a few more lines. Yes, Star Wars is my favorite. Who said it? Who? Top Gun, my man. <laughs> Congratulations. I have a little chocolate for you. It's not Montenegro, it's Italian, but you love it. Here we go. And then I said, okay, I'm gonna try another one. I feel the need and then I went all in, like in the movie, the need for speed. And the kids were like, oh my god, there's something seriously wrong with this professor. Yeah. I said, kids, please, okay, I'm going to try another one. Son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. That's the place where I lost them completely. No one knew what I'm talking about. So I was so desperate that I said, take me to bed or lose me forever. And then I figured out, oh my God, this is first year students at the university, you can't say these things to them. 
And I'm like, okay, kids, I give up. I give up. This is the most famous movie of Tom Cruise. So what's the most famous movie of Tom Cruise? And Mission Impossible, thank you, yes. 500 students shouted out Mission Impossible. And I'm like, Mission what? Well, Mission Impossible. Okay, what's Tom Cruise's second most famous movie? Mission Impossible 2, Mission Impossible 3, Mission Impossible 4. And as long as Tom Cruise keeps shooting, Mission Impossible, that will be his most famous movie ever. And I'm like, but what about this thing? And they're like, well, he, it's Tom Cruise. He's flying an airplane, yes, yes. And I'm like, have you ever seen the movie? No, never. Have you ever heard of this movie? No, never. And at that point of time, I was like a principal in The Simpsons. <laughs> Is it me who's out of touch? No, 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 it has to be the damn kids, right? Because of my first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth year of teaching, everyone knew what a top gun is. If they don't now, they don't know now, it's their fault, it's not my fault, right? No, of course not. It's my fault. Why? Because I was I kept on quoting movies from 80s when I was young. And when they even weren't born. <laughs> Their parents were even, weren't even thinking about having them ever. So I said, okay, I need to change this. I need to keep in touch with them. I need to update myself. So I made a fatal error of asking them what's the one thing they are watching. It was about five, six, seven, eight years ago. What's the one thing that you love to watch? And then I watch it. And to my horror, they said, Gossip Girl. <laughs> I didn't have a clue what Gossip Girl was. And I said, okay, I promised you I'm going to watch this thing. But I didn't know that at the point of time, there was already four seasons of Gossip Girl. So instead of spending a weekend watching Gossip Girl, I spent basically a whole semester watching Gossip Girl. My head was this big with teenage problems. But I was cool again. I was the hip professor once more. So whenever you exited the lecturing call, I said, you know you love me, XO, XO. <laughs> However, a couple of years passed by, I quoted a line from Gossip Girl, and everyone was like, you watch Gossip Girl? And I was like, yeah, I watch Gossip Girl. My god, you're old. <laughs> I'm like, well, what's wrong? But you told me you watched Gossip Girl. Yeah, three years ago. Okay, so what do you watch now? Britney. Uh, that would be good. That's the one thing I watched too. But the answer was Pretty Little Liars. And co co Gossip Girl, compared to Pretty Little Liars, is an Oscar-worthy material. That's like Steven Spielberg directed it himself. Then a couple of years passed by again, and two and a half years ago, the same thing happened to me. Oh my god, he's such a dinosaur. And I was all like, okay kids, okay kids, just cut it out. Tell me what's the show you're watching and let's get on with it. And they said, Dynasty. And I'm like, yes, Dynasty, that's the one TV show I know. Because my mom watched it, and all of our neighbors watched it, and then they were come to my place, and they will all watch it, and then they were discussing, poor old Blake, what are these women doing to him, and so on and so on. And they were like, what are you on about? And I said, you, you said dynasty, right? Yeah, but we said dynasty. I'm like, who, who are these people? Well, that's Blake Carrington, that's Talon Carrington, that... I'm like, no, 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 no. This is Blake Carrington, this is Crystal Carrington. Like, Linda Evans cra cried literally half of this show. I know who too. They said, no, 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 this is Dynasty. This started a couple of months ago. So what I didn't know 
that there is a new show called Dynasty, which is basically a reboot of the show we watched in the 80s. What they didn't know was that this is not an original show. This is a reboot of one of the most famous TV shows in history. So as you kids say nowadays, hashtag mind blown. <laughs> and now back to the business world. What kind of change are we facing in the business world? Well, for once, the average lifespan of the company is going down dramatically. So from the point of time the company started, until it reaches its maximum, and then until it dies. It's going down, 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 down. And it's projected to go down to even less than 20 years by 2025. What else? You take into account the whole history of capitalism. And just last 15 years. So seven biggest bankruptcies happened in the last 15 years. And all previous history, just three of them. That's how much things are getting complicated. And then you compare 1,000 biggest companies 10 years ago and 1,000 biggest companies nowadays. 70% of the companies from 10 years ago are not on the list any longer. 70% gone in just 10 years' time. If you want to see how change looks like in a single photo, this is it. The same sports, Formula One. The same team, Zauber. The same thing, the steering wheel. What's the difference? Well, the difference is a couple of decades between these two shots. The steering wheel on the left looks like a kid's toy. My four-year-old nephew could drive this one. And the one on the right looks like it came out of Tom Cruise's Top Gun movie. And when you're driving, you're afraid that if you press the wrong button, you will fire a rocket or something. What hasn't changed? Our ability as a human being hasn't changed. We haven't grown an extra pair of hands. We haven't grown an extra head. We are basically still the same person. But we are expected to be able to drive this thing, which is now much more complicated. That's what's happening in the business world. And then you say, okay, we need to provide more education to our people. And you, you know about the concept, lifelong learning. You need to update yourself. So companies should provide more and more and more and more education to the people. Because why? People are our most important and most valuable asset. Well, in the real world, we are doing exactly the opposite of that. We are providing people with less and less and less education. And we are expecting them to do it at their own time and at their own expense. So when you are at a place like this, when someone is offering free training and free education for you, that's something that you first need to realize, and then that's something that you need to value and cherish. Because someone is investing its both time and money in order for you to be more productive, more innovative in the future. You know this guy, right? He's giving you troubles. Yeah, yeah, you're already not in your head. He's giving me troubles in my biology class, right? Darwin, yes. You maybe cannot say by heart every single thing that he ever said. But you can, you know one thing. That he said that it's not the strongest of the species that survived, nor the most intelligent, nor the fastest, nor the most beautiful one but the ones that most quickly respond to change. If I keep continue doing the same thing and not responding to the change, well, I'm basically gone. So now I have a short story for you, but it's not a made-up story. It's a science experiment. So it's a real thing. There is a national park called Schumala at Germany and Czech Republic. So one part of the park 
is in Germany, the other part of the park is in Czech Republic. During Cold War, they built an iron curtain right through the park. So one part stayed in Czech Republic, then iron curtain, and then Germany. So no one could move, and no one could move until 1989, until the fall of the Berlin Wall. However, it's not usually people who live in a national park. In this national park, there are 300 deer. You know, deer? Yes, so 300 deer. So one portion of 300 stayed in Germany. The other portion stayed in Czech Republic. They tore down this thing in 1989. This is now a forest. This thing doesn't exist any longer. And then scientists from a university in Czech Republic did an experiment. They put a GPS locator on a collar around the neck of every red deer and they tracked they, their behavior for five to ten years. What did they found out? If the red deer was in Germany and they put a locator around his neck, throughout the experiment the deer never crossed into Czech Republic. He stayed in Germany. He never crossed the imaginary line, which isn't there anymore, since 1989. And if the deer was in, Czech, in Germany, throughout the whole experiment, he never crossed into Czech Republic. He just went back. Now, can you imagine looking through a forest, and there's a Bambi going through the forest, there's an imaginary line which doesn't exist, and the Bambi doesn't do turn. He's not going there. Why? He's used to it, yeah. However, there's a catch. A red deer cannot live more than 15 years. One, five, 15. Which means that all of the deer that took part in this experiment, no one has ever in his lifetime seen the iron curve. They don't know this thing exists. And the deer that were alive during the time of the Iron Curtain did not take part in the experiment because they're dead. So how come you're walking through a forest and you're not crossing something that isn't there and you've never ever seen it? Because when Bambi is walking through the forest, man says, oh, don't go there, don't go there. Just turn away. Why, man? Because, yes, who said it? Yeah. Because my mom told me not to go there. Here you go, the congratulations. <laughs> my mom told me not to go there. Why? I don't know. Go ask grandma. You go ask grandma. Grandma, why don't we cross this line? I don't know. My mom told me that. Okay, I'll go ask Ray, Ray Grandma, but she's dead. You can't ask Ray Grandma, she's dead. And ever since we were here, we've been doing this thing in a, this way. Now, what are the implications to business? But well, I'm going to tell you about the implication, not just about business, but about life itself. There was a patient called Irm, with an M, Guard Cooper, who was accepted into hospital in the UK. She had problems with her heart. So they had to do an open heart surgery. And during the procedure, she would, the doctor already started operating, doctor said to the nurse, blood supply, please. And she said, what blood supply? He started yelling, blood, please, blood, please, she will die out. And she said, but there's no blood, she's not supposed to receive blood transfusion. She stormed out, went to the other room, took blood supply, returned, and before she returned, the poor Irmgard Cooper died. She bled out. When they did an investigation, how was possible that there was no blood supply there? 
The answer was that on the bottle of the blood supply, it said Irngard Cooper with an N. Not M, but an N. So when the nurse was there, she was like, is there blood for Irngard Cooper? No. There's just for Irngard Cooper. Okay, this is not her. I'm going out to the operation without blood. And now you ask yourself, how is that possible? Well, it's not just that it's possible, it's that each year, just in the United States, doctors kill 7,000 people because of the bad handwriting. I can't read what you written, so I'm just going to pretend that's not you or that is you. 7,000 people get killed each year. But how is that possible when 90% of doctors have IT in their offices and in their hospital? 90%. Well, it turns out that 90% have it, but less than 10% actually use it. So we do have computers, but we're not using them. We're still writing by hand. Why? Because ever since I was here, we've been doing it this way. The same thing as Red Deer. You come, you've just freshly graduated, you come as an intern, you try to do something on the computer, and the doctor tells you, oh, don't, don't use that computer. You're like, why? We don't use these around here. Why? See, he's not going to say, my mom tell me so. But when I was an intern, my doctor told me so. But why? Because when he was an intern, his doctor told him so. So when we're talking about red deer, it might be even funny. But when we're talking about people losing their lives, it's not funny at all. What do these people do? What does Victoria's Secret produce, manufacture? Underwear, lingerie, right? One of the most famous companies that produces lingerie anywhere in the world. So about 15 years ago, and they are famous for their annual show, fashion show. So about 15 years ago, there was a new CEO. And he said, we are no longer doing the annual show. And everyone was shocked. How come we're not doing the fashion show? That's one thing people know us for. He said, that the average customer cannot relate to a supermodel any longer because they are too perfect. So he said, instead of doing the fashion show, we're going to do this thing called Angels Across America. We're going to take our angels to regular activities in cities. So if we're, for example, today in New York, we're going to go to a conference like this. If we're going to Miami, we're going to a football game, Miami Dolphins. If we're going to Hollywood, we're going to see a movie. And now imagine, you're in Hollywood, you're watching a movie, you're sitting down, you turn to your left, and you see a Giada Lima sitting right next to you. Oh my god, that's not possible, right? What? What's happening? Am I in paradise or what? Are these angels for real? What happens after 5, 10, 15 minutes, an hour, 2 hours? You're already used to the fact that she's there. And then you start noticing all the things that are wrong with her. Her hair ends are split, she has some cellulite, her face is not that perfect. And then you conclude, okay, so my girlfriend is way cleverer than Adriana Lima, right? <laughs> what happened at the end of the year? That was the worst year in history of Victoria's Secret, and the guy was fired. They brought in a new guy who said, in order to recover, we need to make the show even more glamorous. So each year the show was bigger, better, and they started spending more and more and more money on it. In the meantime, there's another company called Aerie.
that says something different. People, women, are not angels. We are not supermodels. We are regular women with all everything good and bad on our bodies. So we, as a lingerie manufacturer, underwear manufacturer, shouldn't be telling women to change themselves. Our message to them is change your bra. Don't change yourself. You're good. You look good. It's you. Change your bra. Change your company. And they invited girls all over the world to post their photos how they look in their bra online. And that's what all these girls were doing. Victoria's Secret was still basically telling everyone you need to be a super model in order to wear our bra. And what happened? Well, a couple of months ago, the CEO of Victoria's Secret first resigned, and then the new guy said, we have decided to cancel this year's Victoria show. We are not having it. Why? Because we don't know how to do it. We've lost touch with our customers. So we need time to rethink how to connect with them. Things were changing around us. We weren't paying attention. And now we need time to figure it out. This is Kylie Jenner. One of the most successful businesswomen in the world. And she was the youngest self-made billionaire in the world. And you know Kylie because of what? Kylie Cosmetics. Yes. What's, what are the things Kylie Cosmetics? Here you go. Lip kits. Lip kits consist of what's inside the lip kit? Liquid lipstick and and a lip liner, a pencil, lip pencil. Why is this thing important? As a guy, I couldn't figure out what's all the fuss about it. What's so innovative about this that this girl made a billion? Okay, the name? She's a member of the Kardashian Jenner clan, okay? It makes your lips plump. It makes your lips plump, yes? Which I obviously need. Okay, what else? It doesn't go up, okay? It, yeah, it doesn't go up, yes, it lasts longer. And different colors, and one very simple thing which no one in the world figured out before her. A lip kit means that these two things are the same color. Because you buy a liquid lipstick, but you don't have a pencil. And then you go to the shop and what do you do? <laughs> you put 10 different pencils, ah, this is not it, this is not it, this is not it, this is it. Then you buy, you go home, you put it back home and you're like, damn, this is not it. It's because of the good light. She said, why don't we put the same colors in a single box? And about a month ago, she sold the company to Cotti Cosmetics for six hundred million dollars. Millennials get this. Girls get this. I couldn't get it. But, so thanks for explaining how it works. And one final thing, who, who's the guy? Jamie Oliver, yeah, who's he? Who's he? Famous TV chef, one of the most famous chefs in the world who has a famous TV show. So what's the one thing a famous chef, famous TV chef is going to do? Recipe, yeah. He's going to open his own restaurant. So instead of just telling you how to cook, I'm gonna show you how I cook and I'll give you an opportunity to try it. And because I'm one of the best and the most famous in the world, this thing has to be super popular and super successful, right? Why no? Why no? Ah, you haven't tried the other options. 
because telling, before telling him that he's the best. Why no? Aha, uh -huh, it's important to have different tastes of food. What else? So the real answer is no. He thought that it was yes. Business media thought it was yes, because he's the most famous one. What happened? 22 out of 25 restaurants have gone bankrupt. And it's expensive, yeah? But the one thing you need in a restaurant is the quality of the food, the quality of the meal, the variety of the meal. You don't, when you try a pizza, you don't care, you, you, you're not eating Jamie Oliver, you're eating a pizza. So just having his name there is not enough. Branding will not save a terrible product. The product was basically lousy, the brand name was super popular, but that's not enough. So this year, there are only three more restaurants in business. 22 have gone bankrupt. And to conclude my talk, do you remember the Red Deer from Czech Republic and Germany? So my message to you, both in life and in business, is to try to experiment, to try different things, try to be innovative, and not to be a deer. So try to dare and cross that imaginary line. Thank you very much.